ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of our Coin News Extra Interview Session, a program where we invite innovators, stakeholders, influencers in the blockchain, crypto, and fintech ecosystem to come and their view. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at our amazing uh, subject. I know uh, we're going to be looking at scaling in the blockchain space as a startup, so we know that uh, we have an emerging industry, the blockchain ecosystem, and a lot of companies, startups are springing up on a daily basis. So we will be looking at uh, how are we going to be able to survive as a startup uh, in the ecosystem. So joining us to discuss about this is uh, Dr. Vima Matila, who is co-founder of Fire.com, of Firechain. She is joining us from Dubai. We are welcome, Vima. Thank you so much. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, our pleasure having you. So how are you doing today? How is Dubai today? A very warm, we have around 42, 45 degrees, but other than that, excellent. Uh, interesting. And also, I use this opportunity to say congratulations uh, uh, to you and the team at fire.org on your raising of the $100 million, making you uh, 150 uh, uh, unicorn in India. That's uh, an amazing one. Thank you so much. So, uh, let's look at uh, you being able to be doing amazingly well with the project. Uh, so, it's a very good one that we learn from you and see uh, how can startups scale uh, in the blockchain space. And also looking at what our fire.org is really doing, uh, the time frame that it has really become a unicorn is very, very uh, short. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, before we delve into the discussion proper, let's uh, get a brief about yourself and your background. Yes. So from my side, I have been in crypto for the past eight years. I started mining in China in 2013. And since then, I have been involved in projects such as Hedera Hashgraph, as well as uh, invested in Chainlink, Tron, EOS, Quantum, and around 70 other uh, crypto companies in the past few years. And uh, since 2014, 15, I have been very interested in the blockchain infrastructure and accessibility, uh, as well as the sustainability concerns from part of environmental damage caused by, by mining. So for the past eight years, uh, I have been finding expensive problems to solve. And since one year and a half, we have been building FIRE to solve those problems, uh, accessibility as well as sustainability. Interesting. Uh, that's a very nice one. Uh, you've been a, a very long, you stayed long in the ecosystem. It's, it is a very long one there, uh, seeing how long, uh, how old the entire ecosystem is. Uh, that's a very nice one. Uh, so let's look at the uh, discussion, the topic. Uh, uh, how do you say the blockchain ecosystem is for startup? Would you say it's friendly? I would say it's friendly and there is abundance of investment as long as one is solving problems that uh, has, uh, affect the whole ecosystem rather than separately concrete ecosystem, for example. Concretely ecosystem of Avalanche, concretely ecosystem of Binance. If we are solving problems of accessing to the blockchain space, such as, for example, fiat gateway, simplifying user interfaces or simplifying access through payment uh, processors or point of sale, then uh, it's a very um, convenient as well as capital rich. However, uh, right now, due to bear market conditions from entertainment side, including gaming, NFTs, of course, it's more not that friendly. However, the infrastructural side keeps on being uh, friendly. Of course, there's regulatory aspects that affect our industry, like every industry. However, I would say that the, our uh, blockchain industry is still very open and friendly and welcoming to all the newcomers. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so you've been able to uh, move uh, with your team, uh, Fire.org. Uh, so what are some of the challenges uh, startups face in this industry, the blockchain space? Yes, the biggest challenge is talent. Uh, finding talent who uh, are uh, able to both uh, build communicator message as well as sale concepts that are completely new, creative, and don't exist. Uh, 
so talent is the key challenge. And second challenge is, of course, lack of legislation and regulatory framework in some countries, which means that while you are expanding, you don't know what rights you have and you don't have due to the fact of there is a lack of regulatory certainty. Regulation is a very big challenge. We see uh, different countries uh, coming up uh, with different regulatory uh, framework, but we feel uh, in, uh, the ecosystem is still at its infant stage. So I know the regulators are still study, studying the ecosystem as well. Let's talk about uh, your uh, private gathering in your place to buy. Uh, I know you did that. Uh, the last one was at uh, Burj Khalifa uh, for venture funds. Uh, uh, we had uh, some government trips and family. Uh, what are some of the uh, reasons for all this uh, gathering? Uh, what do you have in mind? Yes. So first of all, we have a network of three three hundred venture funds, anywhere from twenty million to five hundred billion. Which means that we the purpose of the gathering is first of all educate. Um, family offices as well as venture funds who are not yet in blockchain to educate them about blockchain, how they can invest in the blockchain, why should they invest in the blockchain and how big the opportunity is. Uh, secondly, uh, to make them awareness of the existent companies in blockchain technology as well as thirdly, invite their communities as well as their investors and members to get access to educational resources of blockchain, as well as encourage them to use uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So uh, as mentioned before, it's mostly educational perspective, as well as investment, as well as them taking part, because some of them can definitely um, uh, in um, intervene in the regulatory aspects as well as influence in the decisions. So we aim to advocate, um, you know, taking the future in perspective, what type of regulatory framework there should have to have higher adoption of, of cryptocurrencies as well as blockchain. Because still here in UAE, cryptocurrencies are not a um, payment um, Method. What I want to talk, talk about, uh, so sorry about that, I'll talk about um, our new raise, uh, recently our uh, fire raised uh, $100 million, uh, making it uh, the 105th uh, unicorn in India, one of the fastest uh, to become a unicorn. Uh, so what would you say about that? Are you surprised? Uh, what, what would you say about the plans for the funds? Uh, also, do you have any plan for Africa? Yes, definitely, definitely. So respect, are we surprised? No, because we worked very hard for it and we have a large team of 120 people. Of course, each one of them were, were a contributing factor towards this race. And we have been working closely together for all for almost a complete year now. And in addition to that, uh, respect, what are our plans? We plan to expand very extensively in Southeast Asia, including Philippines, Indonesia, and, and, and uh, Vietnam, and as a priority in Africa, in, in uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, uh, as, as key uh, countries. And we would we are looking forward to getting more involved in the ecosystem there, providing access to layer one as well as issuing grants grants for 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 the whole African continent to be able to build on fire chain. So for any startups that are looking for grants, we have a pro grant program for new startups. Okay, interesting. Oh, that's a very nice one. Uh, uh, let's look at how do you see the future of blockchain and crypto, uh, most especially for startups. Yes. How I see the future? I see the future as a uh, cross chain that people will stop building on their own ecosystems, rather open up and enable others the uh, access to ecosystem, as well as uh, I see more collaboration with governments, with universities, 
as well as with Fortune 500 and larger corporations. I see that uh, us from the blockchain space, we will provide technologies for for Fortune 500, which don't have yet access to this type of, um, for example, smart contracts, uh, DeFi, there will be more corporate DeFi. And thirdly, I see more liquidity aggregation in the in the NFT space. I see uh, uh, a higher uh, uh, infrastructural technologies to enhance the liquidity also in, in uh, between local currencies uh, attached to crypto. So more fiat gateways from, from local currencies to more variety of crypto. And fourthly, I also see more uh, access from institutional investors to to uh, crypto startups and and uh, fifthly I see uh, increased access from retail investors to to uh, credit crypto credit cards and and crypto phones crypto IoT devices crypto watches and I see the pay payments in crypto to increase significantly. Trust me, before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin User Strategy in Tabby Session, I would just like to get your closing remarks. Yes, uh, thank you so much for inviting, and we look forward to this uh, one year and a half bear market to, to uh, use it well on building, use it well on uh, getting more people on on the blockchain ecosystem, as well as I hope and wish that we can serve everybody in Africa and facilitate them uh, uh, access to technology where it's easy to build. So please uh, check out uh, fire.org and we you can apply there for the grants. We are here for you and and of course without you there is no us. Thank you very much for uh, showing up on the show. We really appreciate that. Looking forward to having you subsequently. Thank you so much. Okay. We look forward to it. Okay. Thank you.